Good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ, and welcome to evening prayer from St. Michael and All Angels Parish. We begin with the seasonal sentence for Christmas found on page 60 and the pages of that are to follow. God is love. This how he showed his love among us. He sent his only Son into the world that we might have life through him. Hear us, O Lord, for your mercy is great. We will exalt you, O God, our Savior, and praise your name forever and ever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your Spirit, May we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. The canticle found on page 64. Glory to you. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple. On the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you beholding the depths in the high vault of heaven. Glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and save you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Grant, merciful Lord, to your faithful people, pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed from all their sins, and save you with a quiet mind, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The hymn, for the, the psalm, appointed psalm for this evening, is Psalm 72, found on page 550. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to the king's son, that he may rule your people righteously and the poor with justice, that the mountains may bring prosperity to the people and the little hills bring righteousness. Ye shall defend the needy among the people, He shall rescue the poor and crush the oppressor. He shall live as long as the sun and moon endure. From one generation to another. He shall come down like rain upon the moon field. Like showers that water the earth. 
In his time shall the righteous flourish. There shall be abundance of peace till the moon shall be no more. He shall rule from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. His foes shall bow down before him and his enemies lick the dust. The kings of Tarshish and of the isles shall pay tribute and the kings of Arabia and Saba offer gifts. All kings shall bow down before him and all the nations do him service. For he shall deliver the poor who cries out in distress and the oppressed who has no helper. He shall have pity on the lowly and poor. He shall preserve the lives of the needy. He shall redeem the li their lives from oppression and violence. And there shall their blood be in his sight. Long may he live. And may there be given to him gold from Arabia. May prayer be made for him always, and may they bless him all the day long. May there be abundance of grain on the earth, growing thick even on the hilltops. May its fruit flourish like Lebanon, and its grain like grass upon the earth. May his name remain forever and ever and be established as long as the sun endures. May all the nations bless themselves in him and call him blessed. Blessed be the Lord God, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous deeds. And blessed be his glorious name, ever and may all the earth be filled with his glory Amen Amen Our first reading comes from the book of Genesis chapter 28 beginning at verse 10 Jacob left Beersheba and went toward Haran he came to a certain place and stayed there for the night, because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place. And he dreamed that there was a ladder set up on the earth, the top of it reaching to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and to your offspring. And your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the east and to the west, and to the north and to the south. And all the families of earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. So Jacob rose early in the morning, and he took the stone that he had put under his head, and set it up for a pillar, and poured oil on the top of it. He called the place, that place, Bethel. But the name of
of the city was loose at the first. Then Jacob made a vow saying, If God will be with me, and will keep me in this way that I go, and will give me bread to eat and clothing to wear, so that I come again to my father's house in peace, then the Lord shall be my God. And this stone, which I have set up for a pillar, shall be God's house, and of all that you give me, I will surely give one-tenth to you. We now return to our books of common prayer as we recite the Magnificat on page 67. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in you, O God, my Savior, for you have looked with favor on your lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. You, the Almighty, have done great things for me, and holy is my name. You have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. You have shown strength with your arm and scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. You have filled the hungry with good things, and the rich you have sent away empty. You have come to the help of your servant Israel, for you have remembered your promise of mercy, the promise made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Our second reading. A reading from the Word of God, taken from the book of First of Ephesians, chapter four, beginning at verse seventeen. Now this I affirm and insist on in the Lord: you must no longer live as the Gentiles live, in the futility of their minds. They are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God because of their ignorance and hardness of heart. They have lost all sensitivity and have abandoned themselves to licentiousness, greedy to practice greedy to practice every kind of impurity that is not the way you learned Christ. For surely you have heard about him and were taught in him as truth in Jesus. You were taught to put away your former way of life, your old self corrupt and deluded by its lust, and to be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and to close yourselves with the new self-centered, your new self created according to the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. So then, putting away falsehood, let let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather, let them labor and work honestly with their own hands, so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouth, but only what is useful for building up, as there is need so that your words may give grace to those who hear it. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with which you are marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander together with all malice and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, 
forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. We return to our books of common prayer and we recite the canticle, a song of creation, beginning on page 50. We will recite the invocation and the third portion, the people of God and the doxology. Glorify the Lord, all you works of the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. In the firmament of his power, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Let the people of God glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O priests and servants of the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O spirits and souls of the righteous. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. You that are holy and humble of heart, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Let us glorify the Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Praise Him and highly exalt Him forever. In the firmament of His power, glorify the Lord. Praise Him and highly exalt Him forever. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and redeemer. Amen. Happy New Year to everyone. Happy New Year. Honestly, sadly, I don't quite agree with that. Our country, our world has not been renewed, nor has it become any less violent or crazy. Imagine recently, while church services were going on, some of the local hooligans under the influence of God alone knows who attempted to disrupt the mass by throwing fireworks at the church and into the entrance of the church. What about that unimaginable murder of a mother and her mother? by an individual who once must have professed his deep love to this woman. This individual is also one we would have called upon to defend our country and uphold the laws of this land. Is this a happy new year? Can you believe it? What have we come to in this new year? It seems that any remaining respect, sense of decency, or simply being able to tell the difference between right and wrong, is fast leaving our country. As Christians, it is not always simple for us to live and exist in this chaotic country we call home. Who or what do you follow? Which voice do you listen to? Who can you trust? What is your belief? Then let us not forget, there is so much silence, deafening silence, as we would say. So much misinformation and slander and people with ulterior motives. And that is just from those who want to be leaders in our country. Well, hopefully, we as Christians follow, believe, and trust in Jesus Christ and God's word. Can people tell the difference between us as Anglicans and people who have no belief in God? Do we look and behave just like our countrymen and women? Or is there something different about us? 
like the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and following Jesus. Here's the issue. If we claim to be Christians but resemble the world around us in behavior and deeds, and we look and talk and act like non-Christians, we might really just be fakes who have very little to do with God. But if we are really following Christ, if our thoughts and actions are being guided by God and we are becoming more and more like Christ with every passing day, then we are on the right path. Every new year, many of us make resolutions to improve ourselves. But have we made that resolution to improve ourselves spiritually? Have we been regular in our attendance at God's gym, the church, where we develop our spiritual muscles? This evening, we are called to take an honest look at ourselves. If we are becoming more and more Christ-like over time, then that is wonderful. Praise God indeed. But if there are still many areas of our lives where we are no different to the rest of the world, this new year, let us make a change in direction and earnestly begin to follow Jesus. You see, brothers and sisters, those who are still wrapped up in the world and its ways oppose God's will for us, his creation. The Bible is telling us that anyone not saved by faith in Jesus Christ has their mind dark. They are blinded to the divine truth. Their view of the world is wrong. But why do some of us think this way? It may be because of ignorance, not knowing about Jesus or the scriptures. But if you are here on this evening prayer, then that won't apply to you. Or it could be that some of us have hearts of stone, preferring to pick and choose what we want to accept as the truth, not being cognizant of the fact that we continue to live in darkness. It's either we are living in God's light or we are living in the darkness of the world. We have all seen and heard many testimonies of God's power, his influence in people's lives. Many testimonies of God's power, his influence in people's lives. But some of us continue to reject him anyway. The majority just want more for themselves. Personal desires matter the most. It doesn't matter who is hurt by our action. The I comes first in everything and everyone else comes last. There's no absolute truth, just truth as we as individuals perceive it. Family in Christ, ungodly thinking leads to corrupt actions and behaviors that lead to separation from the one true God. A person who rejects God's will will lead a life that ultimately will end in eternal damnation. What do we think and what we believe really will dictate how we live? But let's not forget or dismiss the point of this evening's verses from Ephesians. As Christians, we must no longer live as the world does. We must be different. Are we 
learning and following God's truth? Or are we actually ignorant of what it says? Have we ever hardened our hearts with things that we should be listening to in obedience to God? Have we ever selfishly put me first or my peeps or my family? Have we ever lied to make ourselves look better and make others look as if they are at fault? If we are honest with ourselves, we'll admit that we've done these things at some time or the other. So what should real Christians look like? As Christians, we are supposed to look and think differently to the world around. As Christians, we have to stand out as being different from those who do not know or follow Christ. We have to think and act differently to them. Our thinking is guided by following Christ's teaching and having renewed attitudes and mind. The primary way in which we as Christians change the way we think is by focusing on the teachings of Jesus, by reading and studying and learning God's word, by listening to God's direction. As we learn God's life lessons, we reprogram our minds and ourselves as to how we should behave and navigate in this world. Our love for the Bible should be a daily practice not just something that we, in passion, listen to while sitting in the church pews. Reading the Bible and praying at least daily, and if possible, more than that, we as church would then grow spiritually, each and every one of us. We, as a church, would be much more unified, and many of our conflicts and arguments will never occur. God's Word renews our attitudes and our minds. It helps us to think like Christ, and this would result in a change in our actions. As we encounter God's Word and are convicted by the Holy Spirit, who lives within each and every one of us, we will begin to recognize our own sins and confess them to God. And in this repentance, we would be both turning away from whatever sins and turning to God for forgiveness. We will be stopping negative worldly behaviors and starting good Christian habits. We will, we will cease in engaging in lies, but we will also begin to speak the truth. Our old worldly selves would have been okay with speaking half-truths and making innuendos that make us look good or deflect the blame from us and onto others. But the new person that we are becoming in Christ, isn't afraid to speak the truth, even if it was the result in our punishment. Our old selves take advantage of others to get ahead. But as Christians, we work hard and honestly, even if it is for very little, and we share what we have with those who are less fortunate than ourselves. Because this is what God would have us do. Stop gossip, which tears down others, and engage in positive, uplifting comments that teach and build up those with whom we come into contact with. Our worldly selves tears down others and can't wait 
to tell what this person or that person said or did. The old self will make excuses for this, like saying, I was just talking, I was just venting, I didn't mean anything by it. But in our heart, we know when it is gossip. The new man who we desire to be works hard to speak positively about others. And if they have nothing positive to say, they say nothing. The new self goes above and beyond to lift others up with their words, instill that confidence and positivity which some of us so desperately need. Sometimes, however, the words that we must speak involve correction. But our corrections brother, to others, brothers and sisters in Christ, must not be harsh. Our correction of others must be spoken in love. As Christians, we should not judge or want to get even or hold grudges of any kind. But we should be kind, compassionate, and quick to forgive. Our old selves would get bitter and resentful and all the rest of that when things don't go up. But this new man that we are supposed to be in Jesus Christ is kind, compassionate, and forgiving even when others don't deserve it. Even when it's not fair and even when it doesn't make sense. Because how can we forget that this is how God treats us even though we are sinners and can do nothing to deserve his mercy. Have we been trying to live this out? Or is the old man still alive and thriving, making us look more and more like the world around us? Or are we beginning to look and behave more and more? If we are honest with ourselves, I think that we would have to admit that there have been times when anger, and gossip, and slander have occurred in our church. Not all the time, but enough of the word to get around that people are not happy with others in the church. And worse than that, it also gets outside of the church where people say, hmm, if that is what believing in God is all about, I want no part of it. When we shine God's light on our sins, it gives us an opportunity to assess and repent and say we are sorry, genuinely, and ask for God's grace. I personally I'm experiencing forgiveness for many of my mistakes. I see my new self struggling to come to the fore. And I know that through the power of the Holy Spirit, through the power of God, that the new man who God is calling me to will win. This will result in my mind being renewed. Repentance and transformation will be forthcoming in the end. And I will look back in astonishment at my new self. I will look at my new self in astonishment and when comparing it to my old self, be amazed that the two are so dissimilar. When we confess our sins and turn to God, He will work in us and on us to produce righteousness and holiness and give us his grace. Every day, we will learn to think differently and to be more like Christ. It is, it is at this point 
I believe that it will be a happy new year because things would have changed for the better, not only personally, but in our wider country around us. There will be less self-centeredness, less gruesome crime, and a very clear understanding and example of what is right and what is wrong, what is godly and what is weak. My brothers and sisters in Christ, I have said these words to you in the name of the Father, Son, Amen. We now return to our books of the common prayer as we recite the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. I, on the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Suffrages Lord, reveal your love among us, that we may know the joy of your salvation. Grant peace within and among all nations and teach our leaders wisdom. Endow your church with faithfulness and her servants with knowledge and true godliness. Defend, O Lord, the rights of the poor and the oppressed, that your justice may be known among all people. Lord, renew your spirit within us, that in us and through us your will may be done. We now turn to page 159 as we recite the collect for the first Sunday after Christmas. Almighty God, you have poured upon us the, light, the new light of your incarnate word. Grant that this light, enkindled in our hearts, may shine forth in our lives through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. One God, now and forever. Amen. We return to page 71 as we recite the second and fourth prayers on that page. The light now darkness, Lord, we pray. And in your mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Grant, Lord, that we may be faithful to you without turning aside, worship you without growing weary, serve you without feeling, diligently seek you, happily find you, and forever possess you, the one and only God, blessed forever and ever. Amen. We will now turn to page 84, as we recite a prayer for the presence of Christ and a prayer of self-dedication. Come to us, Lord Christ, in your understanding love, when all around us seems dark and uncertain, 
when our faith is low and when we cannot feel you near and we find it hard to pray. Come to us then, dear Lord, as you came to your disciples in the darkest hour of the night and let the light of your presence dispel our fears, renew our trust, and bring peace to our hearts for your tender mercy's sake. Amen. Prayer of self-dedication. Almighty and eternal God, so draw our hearts to you, so guide our minds, so fill our imaginations, so control our wills that we may be wholly yours, utterly dedicated unto you. And then use us, we pray you, as you will, always to your glory and the welfare of your people, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Page 73, A Prayer of Self-Dedication Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your Holy Word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our path, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and save all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us evermore. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Do have a blessed evening. And as we go about our daily lives in this new year, let us truly come to know God and be different to the world around us. Do have a blessed evening.